Good Monday, makers. Hope everybody had a good weekend and is excited to check out some builds. I know I am. There were some great ones shared this week, as always, in the community, on the website, across social media. There's some really cool ones, and I'm excited to show them to you. So let's just jump right in and check them out. First up is a build from Compass Custom Creations on Instagram. And it's cool because they make all kinds of concrete furniture and things, and they were apparently commissioned to make a concrete, I think it's just uh, meant to be a small shell for a side table. Oh, there, yeah, needed a small shell for their powder room. So they wanted to use an industrial look, and they did that with concrete and electrical conduits. This is really cool. They custom make concrete tops for tables and things, and they made that, as you can see here, and they built a simple frame for it with uh, maker pipe and conduit. And it's really simple. It's four 90-degree connectors at the top just to create a rectangle to support the main top. And then it's got four legs, and they're just braced from side to side with T-connectors. I think total four, six, yeah, eight connectors total. So like I said, just a really simple design, but a great uh, table or shelf, just uh, a really great way to, to make a, a side table or something like that. So definitely check them out. But we appreciate them sharing this on Instagram and uh, giving, giving us a tag. Really cool to see. The next build we have is from Matthew Compton, a longtime community member. He runs a timing business. Uh, I think it's Compton Time and Measure, I think in Texas for like road races and endurance races for running. And uh, and he, he needed something that he could pack away easily into a trailer or something like that and then haul it to the race and then unload it and unpack it. And this is the collapsible sign frame that he made. And we'll, we'll let him explain. Let's, let's go through it here. Um, first order of business is we're going to screw these little knobs here. Okay, I got them on both ends. Yeah, so he's got threaded pipe inserts in the end of the conduit here. And then he's got, uh, you know, those threaded knobs. We talked about them on the channel a little while back, but he's got those threaded into the inserts. These are just, um, you know, kind of uh, bolt knobs. I don't know what you call the damn thing. I get them at Home Depot. Yeah, I think you get them at Home Depot, yeah, Ace Hardware, knobs. and uh, all kinds of cool, or so all kinds of go. places. But yeah, he Get takes those out. You're going to need them lighter. All right. So cool. All right. So we got them loose. All right. So now you take Morning, this Greg. guy here. Morning, Greg. Thanks for stopping by. And we're going to lay him down. Okay. Next order of business is we pull this out and we right click into one of the Did holes. Did you see that? That telescope's out of the end of the frame there. What I've got here is... I've got spring pans from like tent legs, that kind of thing that I've got. Yeah, so he drilled a hole through the three quarter inch conduit and the half inch conduit and then added uh, some of those tent pole clips. We've also done a video on those in the past, added those inside of the half inch. And he might have been, been the first one to share this hack. Can't remember, but uh, he's got the tent pole clips inside the half inch. And then once you press them in, and you can uh, kind of telescope. Half inch pipe. And the half inch pipe. There's a good close up of it. The three quarter inch pipe works telescopically, so I can adjust this to a couple of different levels if I want. Let's take it up to the next level. All right. So then it just slides there out and then pops in place in the next okay. one to now create a telescoping uh, frame. So we're going to take this guy, stand it up. But you can see there, I mean, even when it's pulled out like that, it's you know still flat packed. Uh, and that's kind of the whole point of this whole frame is to be flat packable. But now he kind of deploys it into sign mode. We're going to pull this down. Look at that. I have my stiff hinge working again. And I think he's just using the hinge method where you have the uh, T-connector and you remove the friction band off of it. It still has a, a tight fit, but not as tight as it would be with the um, friction bands. And so you're able to kind of hinge it. And that's how he kind of swiveled Once that down. Now, we take this other piece. Pull this back up. And same thing there. But, now, but look at this. Don't need these knobs. So here they are. So then he takes the knobs and here. he drilled a hole through this outer pipe, this vertical pipe. And, and into this piece of pipe that has a star nut. The knob goes into that, and then this piece that he just swiveled up has threaded inserts into it as well. And so then he just threads the knob into that and creates a stand. Mm -hmm. And once you fully tighten mm -hmm. those mm -hmm. and get those straight. together then you've got your your finished frame and here he is kind of showcasing like i said he's got a timing business for endurance races and road races and things and so uh he's able to you know like i said deploy these frames 
and he can telescope them to different sizes and then he can just have the sturdy frame and put these signs on whenever he's doing a race. So super cool, all kinds of awesome hacks in there and uh, cool techniques. And even if you're not building a sign frame per se, this could be useful for all kinds of stuff. If you need to make a flat packable build that can expand and then be deployable, it's just a really cool technique for doing that. So thanks so much, Matthew, for sharing that. Next up is a build, and this kind of came from Donald, and this uh, is actually wedding backdrops that he made. Basically, they, they said they had a lot of weddings inside of this church, and they, as you can see, they've got the piano and some other mu uh, musical instruments back there. Um, and if they weren't being used in the wedding or they just wanted to create a nice backdrop for the wedding, they needed to be able to put something up that kind of created a wall to block everything so they could have a nice backdrop for photos and just for the ceremony in general. So what they did, or what Donald did, was built the, this backdrop frame, as you can see there, that allows them to hang up curtains. And uh, potentially, I guess you could hang up other things on there as well if you wanted to add some you know, other decorations, but mainly it just holds curtains. And uh, the way they did it was there's basically, you can see there some like small square, I don't know if they're like wood, uh, little pieces of wood or, you know, some other base, but basically there's flanges attached to those bases that send a vertical pipe up. And then there's T connectors at the very top to just have a pipe go from one to the other. And basically there is, uh, I think, eight different backdrops that kind of slide together, but they're all made that same way with the T-connectors that have the pipe that go from one side to the other, and then they can kind of be moved around um, or pushed close together, as we can see here. And it's just a really simple frame, um, but it works great because pipes are, you know, curtain rods or, you know, tubes. So just like as if it was a curtain rod, it's basically the allows the curtains or the whatever it is being hung up to just slide over those pipes that are going horizontally across the very top of all the all the different uh, backdrop frames there. So really simple, but a really great way to kind of clean up a background and just add a backdrop to something like this uh, if you need to accomplish something like that. So really cool, Donald. Thanks so much for leaving that review on the website. Glad you had a good experience. He said it's made with half-inch conduit, which is something I didn't mention. Um, but yeah, really glad that worked out for you. It looks awesome. Next up is another build on Instagram, and this is from Mike Van Doozy, who has a YouTube channel. Uh, Keep on Growing with Mike Van Doozy is his YouTube channel, and then he also has this Instagram, which will be linked down below. And he recently made a set it and forget it lettuce ladder, he called it. So basically, he built this really kind of uh, just simple frame for lettuce, uh, and he, as you can see here, it's kind of a lean-to design. So basically, it's got two verticals, one on each side, and he just has it resting against or on top of, uh, you know, these like concrete pads here. And then it leans up against the side of, of a house or whatever that is. It looks like a side of a house. Anyway, that doesn't really matter, I guess. But it's just leaning up against the side of the house. Oh, yeah, he said in the post, against the house with a pool noodle, which is a, a, good, um, a good hack to keep in mind. Let's see if we can see that here. Yeah, there you go. So the very top of the pipe, he's got a pool noodle, which will just kind of protect it, uh, you know, the, the side of the house from getting scratched up from the conduit, which is a good uh, good thing to keep in mind. And basically, he's got those um, those verticals leaning up against the, the house, and then they're connected with T connectors from one side of each pipe to the other. And these horizontal pipes allow the cartons here that have the lettuce plants inside of them to just rest on the pipes going from side to side. You can see that the plastic handle of this container uh, fits over top of the conduit nicely. And basically, you just got a bunch of these plastic containers, as you can see, and the pipe just runs through it, and that's how they're secured. And as you can see, it looks like it's working great, and the lettuce is growing on there. So really cool, really simple, but just an awesome solution, especially if you want to grow lettuce. And this really isn't a huge footprint because you, know, you have it leaning up against the house, probably sticks out you know, a few feet from the wall, and then goes up. Not a huge footprint, and he's got one, two, three, four, five, 10, 15, 20, at least 20 lettuce plants growing. So really awesome. And as he said, it's a set it and forget it kind of thing. And thanks so much, Mike, for sharing that. Really cool to see. Next up is a build, and this came from Asan, and this is a canopy slash privacy screen built on a second level deck. And he said it's constructed mostly of 90 degree connectors. We actually talked on the phone a couple of times and worked through the design because uh, there was a couple of things he needed to accomplish. So first of all, the canopy part of it, as you can see up here, and then the privacy screen, I think his neighbors are pretty close. And so having a privacy screen here to kind of transform the deck. Yeah, there you go. You can see that's the neighbor's house. Kind of transform the deck and create a nice place to hang out 
and uh, you know maybe maybe eat some dinner, or just you know hang out out there and have some privacy. It's really important. But here we can see the framework, and it's attached to the house. And we actually talked about these uh, these these solutions a couple of weeks ago on the channel. Um, they're, they're basically like a horizontal flange solution, and he got them on Amazon. They're just ceiling curtain rod mounts. They basically just have a round base and then a, a little short stem that comes off and then a little round uh, kind of flange piece that the conduit fit nicely through. And they have two different kinds. You can get one that's kind of loose in there, which I, which works well for what he did, which we'll talk about in a second. But they also have one that is a set screw design that kind of holds it in there a little bit more and makes it a little bit more secure than the loose one, of course. And so he's got all those, and I think they're rated for like 10 pounds or something each. And he's got just a bunch of those in series along the, the side of the house here. And then the conduit runs all the way through and they're secured together. I think it's a longer span than 10 foot. So they're secured together with, I think 180 degree connectors there. Looks like you could also use a coupling um, to, to kind of extend that run or some of the other methods we've talked about for joining EMT together. But basically once he's got that pipe, you know, off the side of the house, that's kind of the hardest thing to accomplish first. Then from there, you just have to basically add your horizontal spans that run the length of the deck, which is what he did next. And they go all the way down and then connect, it uh, looks like T connectors um, on this front horizontal pipe. Oh, you can see there's some like off the shelf couplings there. That's how he joined the, the long pieces, I think. And some, it looks like a 180 there and then a coupling there. So maybe it's a mixture of solutions, but he's got T connectors that go down and this kind of creates the frame for the privacy portion of the screen. As you can see here, I think this is actually the other side of the deck. But as you can see, this you know creates the the canopy that goes all the way down and sits flush with the with the uh, deck railing. And this is really cool because I think he actually lives fairly close to us down I think you know down south somewhere in Georgia area. And he's kind of worried about rain and snow. So this is a really nice angle that allows the the snow and rain to flow off of the roof. And uh, he's able to do this. And he basically, yeah, this is really cool because he made basically where you can adjust it. So he can have it in this mode if he's worried about weather coming in and have, you know, the rain and everything slide off. But then also here it is kind of in privacy mode or just normal use. And this pipe that has the privacy screen on it has a lower horizontal pipe that runs the length of the conduit or the, the length of the deck. And that goes down and goes inside of the spring clips. See if we can see them here. There's spring clips spaced out a few feet apart here on the deck railing. Basically, he just pops those in there. It looks like he added some ball bungees just for added strength, which is probably a good idea because I don't know how strong those spring clips, I mean, they're made to hold like shovels and rakes and things on the wall. Uh, so I don't know how strong they would be for something like this, but it looks like he added some ball bungees as just like an extra, uh, an extra you know, way to secure it, which is a good idea. So basically here it is the frame in canopy privacy mode or just normal use mode. And then you can just pop them out of the spring clips, slide that down uh, where the privacy screen, as you can see here, just kind of overhangs the other side of the deck. And then it creates that nice pitched angle where you could, um, you know, have snow and things wash off, but really sweet. It's a, it's a good, uh, a good canopy to pull some inspiration from if you're wanting to do something similar. Uh, really cool to see uh, from Asan. Thanks so much for for sharing that with us and I'm glad it worked out well. Like I said, we talked on the phone a couple of times, so it's always cool to have a phone conversation about an idea and then see it come to reality. That's always uh, really awesome. So thanks Hassan again, really appreciate it. Next up is another build on Instagram and this is from Earth Nails and Tails. This is Phil, he does all kinds of gardening content as well. And recently he lives in an area where I guess he can do some gardening in the fall. And a couple weeks ago, he got some pea plants in the ground and he made a simple trellis for the pea plants. Here, let's play the video created this really simple conduit trellis using the maker pipe system for my peas that I'm growing this fall. I planted these peas a couple weeks ago. Now that they're starting to grow, we have to give them something to climb up. This yarn works great. So I just gently tie the yarn around the base of the plant and then I pull. Here we can kind of see the frame. As we said, it's really simple. He's got three verticals that go up, T connectors at the top to create or to, to kind of connect that horizontal pipe. And then and same thing here in the middle, except instead of a T in the middle, there's a 180 degree connector, which basically um, allows him to do the same kind of horizontal pipe uh, with T connectors on the outside, but 180 in the middle. And then he's just attaching the Pull yarn. Pull it up to each horizontal portion, tie it to the top and make sure it's nice and tight. Now our peas are perfectly trellised. So give us a follow and let's see how these peas grow. Nice. But yeah, this is a good trellis to keep in mind uh, next spring, or if you live in an area where you can do some gardening in the fall, then yeah, this is a great trellis to pull from. Really awesome, Phil. Thanks so much for sharing that. And definitely check out Earth Nails and Tails on Instagram. 
uh, for more inspiration and ideas for gardening. And if you want to see more details about how these peas grow, give them a follow. Thanks, Phil. Next up is a build, and this is from, let's see here, this is from John, and this is a solar panel frame that's able to kind of roll around and deploy, which is really cool. He said the solar panels are 17 pounds each, and rather than take them out one by one, he connected the cables and he can adjust the angles individually. This is what he came up with. So we can see here, here's the frame. Basically, he created a rectangular frame using 90 degree connectors. In that scenario, it would probably would be better to use T connectors um, just to, to create a, a 2D square. Uh, it's a little bit cheaper on you. And if you're not using that middle pipe for anything kind of structural in your build, and if this is just empty like that, then T connector is a good solution to replace that. But it does work. As you can see here, he created a rectangle with the 90s. And then he's got T connectors, uh, basically sending pipes all the way down to the other side of the frame. Did the same thing up here. And then it looks like he bolted the solar panels to the frame by basically just adding a hole through the conduit and a bolt that goes through <clears throat> into the frame and secures that way. He's got the wiring secured. And as he said, he said he could adjust each individually. Oh, maybe that's what he means. Okay, so this adjustable angle pipe that comes off of here has a adjustable angle connected to some sort of a round base. And I think he's able to basically, you can kind of see uh, a little bit back there whenever it's angled like this. I think he's got those adjustable angle pipes set to a certain angle, probably just, you know, does it, you know, eyeballs it and set to a certain angle. And those flat round bases we saw basically lean up against the ground and you could probably pull them closer if you wanted a harsher angle or you could kind of spread it out if you wanted it to be uh, more flat. So I think that's how we did the, uh, the angled part of it, which is uh, a clever solution. Looks like it's working great. I think he said they're 17 pounds each. So that's 34, 51 pounds. Um, and it looks like it's holding great. And then he also added uh, some wheels to the, the end. And this is a really good technique. I've mentioned this to a few people that have asked for solutions or asked how they could accomplish something um, similar where you need to kind of move something it's, if it's kind of heavy, but you want to move it around. I think often of those grills that you can get, you know, just like the, the Weber grills or, you know, some of those like small charcoal grills, you'll, you'll notice on those that the back, the heaviest part of it has two wheels and the front of it's just legs that go down. But if you want to move it around, you just kind of tilt up the front and then use the back legs to roll it. I think that's a good technique to incorporate into builds if you want to do something like this and, uh, you know, have a solution because the casters work well inside of vertical pipes and then all four wheels or however many casters you're using allow you to roll around the project. But a solution like this where you don't need four wheels, you just kind of need to be able to roll it, move it, place it and have it sit somewhere for a you know, period of time and then you just pick up and roll it again. It's kind of like trash cans even. Trash cans are the same kind of construction where they have the, the wheels in the back and then the front are just, it's just like a flat part that just rests on the ground. And then you, you know, grab that handle and push it. And I think that's a good technique to keep in mind for stuff like this. And he he did that with T connectors. He attached uh, basically a T, sends a pipe up, did the same thing on this side, connects to another T. And then he created an axle that connects from one wheel to the other. And I imagine there's threaded ro uh, threaded rod or a piece of all thread that goes all the way through. We've talked about that method a lot on the channel. We actually have a video on it you can find you have to scroll back a little bit i think it was last year sometime um, but basically you just have the the axle is housed inside the conduit and because it's housed inside the conduit you can basically build off of it with the connectors as you normally would and you can add an axle and wheels to any kind of build as you can see here so really cool thanks so much john for sharing this i think it's a, a good solution and i'm glad it's working out for you glad you found us and glad you had a good experience building and if you're wanting to create something similar i think that's a good technique for wheels to keep in mind and also for the adjustability of, uh, of some kind of frame. So really cool, John. Thanks again for sharing. Next up is another hack for actually uh, axles. And this is from Michael. This is really cool because this is a kayak cart uh, that we've had shared quite a few times in the community. In fact, we actually have this as a kit on the, uh, on the website. You can buy the kayak cart kit. And basically, Michael modified it a little bit to have it work well for tying down kayaks. And I actually built the kayak cart uh, a little bit ago, actually, whenever we made the axle video, I built it for the axle video. And I remember when I finished building it and I had the kayak sitting on top, it just basically rests on top of the frame here where these pool noodles are, or that um, pipe insulation is. The kayak rests on top. And I remember I secured the kayak by just, you know, getting some bungee cords and just kind of pulling it tight over the kayak and then just hooked it wherever I could. 
on the frame, which I think works okay. But Michael's solution is really clever and I think is a nice addition to the kayak cart to just create tie down points for the kayak. So this is the normal you know, construction of the kayak cart kit. You can actually get instructions for this on the kit page uh, or check out Axel uh, Axe Maniac on um, YouTube. He has uh, does all kinds of kayak content and some great videos, and he's actually the one uh, who built it and shared the original video and uh, the kind of the step-by-step -step tutorial. Uh, so definitely check out his video, which is also on that kit page if you want to check it out. But as I said, this is the, the main con the construction of the kayak cart, and he used a similar, or he uses a similar method um, that we just looked at with John's build, where it has the axle inside of the conduit, and then you build off of it. And um, we can see here on the outside, usually the, the nut that holds the wheel on is just right up against the, the wheel bearing. Uh, maybe use a washer is a good idea there. Um, normally that's how it is, but instead, uh, Michael actually extended just a short st stub of conduit on the other side. So it just, there's a you know piece of all thread or bolt or something going through and it sticks out enough to where conduit could be on the outside of the wheel. And then he added this flat piece of metal. Don't know exactly if that's something that he kind of fapped up or if he had something laying around that worked. But basically you could just get a, you know, a flat piece of metal and drill a hole through it where the, uh, the all thread will go through it. And then it creates, it almost looks like a dog tag, but it has this tab on top and there's another hole drilled and there's a carabiner attached to it. And then you just assemble the rest of the axle like normal, which is just the, you know, the nut on the outside. And because that's secured on there really tight and it's metal, so I imagine it's strong. Basically, once the kayak sits on top, you could use a ratchet strap or really anything that, that you can secure stuff with. I mean, I guess it doesn't have to be a ratchet strap, but bungee cord, whatever it may be. But you can easily just hook onto the axle and then, you know, go over top of the kayak and then hook. I imagine there's one on the other side and you can hook it over there, too. So that's a really good solution. And uh, I think it's a good thing to keep in mind, even if you aren't doing a kayak cart. Maybe you're doing some kind of rack for, I don't know. Maybe it's a rack on, on the back of the bed of a truck or something, and you just need a good solution for creating tie-down points. And that's all the builds I have for you guys this week. As always, and just enjoyed sitting down and looking at these builds, and uh, thanks for joining me. And if you want to check out any of these in more detail, they'll be linked down below. And if you haven't subscribed already, we'd appreciate it. I think we're a little less than 100 away from 10,000, which is really awesome. Thanks, everybody, for the support. Uh, we're trying to get 10,000 by the end of the year. So if you enjoy the videos and haven't subscribed already, we'd really appreciate it. But that's all the builds. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out again. Hope everybody has a good week, and we'll see you later.